Nigeria, the electoral body has asked the tribunal looking into the conduct of February's presidential ballot to dismiss the opposition's legal challenge to Bola Tinubu's victory. The Independent National Electoral Commission described the petitions as grossly incompetent, vague and academic. Mr. Tinubu of the ruling APC party was declared the winner by 37%. But his opponents, second placed Atiku Abubakar and third placed Peter Obi, have rejected the results and want the election tribunal to nullify them. The electoral process was criticized by observer groups as falling short of required standards. Well, for more on this, let's bring in Arise's political editor and director of News, Sumner Sambo, who joins me in the studio. Good to see you. Thank you so much, uh, Sumner. Just tell us more about the grounds on which INEC is challenging the petitions against the conduct of the elections yes uh, you know the uh w with the petitions uh, by these petitioners the onus is on INEC to prove that it conducted the election creditably uh, um, so uh for it to actually arrive at a decision that it conducted the election credibly uh, it had to put out uh, a position uh, and this is what you could hear from INEC saying that uh, first of all the controversial issues of the IREV mm. and the beavers that the beavers election uh, machine uh, was not meant to transmit el electronic results to transmit results el electronically uh, that it wasn't meant for collation of results including the results viewing portal well, which is known as IREV us, eh? yes <laughs> that it was just supposed to have been yeah. meant for accreditation mm. and then of course you snap and then you send and so that the results are not supposed to be in real time mm. and uh, when you see uh, the what the INEC council tried to do uh, he when he looked at the the a response by the petitioners saying that look, INEC chairman himself had gone ahead to assure the nation over and over that the results will be uh, you know transmitted in real time and all of that. The suddenly in this um, response by INEC, we are hearing the INEC council saying that no, it was just to reassure the nation that there's an electronic like that. uh, organization of the election and that uh, the the elections will be held digitally in such a way that uh, people can go and view the results but that the results are not supposed to be in real time and then uh, surprisingly they also kicked against uh, Peter Obi's entire petition dismissing it that Peter Obi was not legally qualified to have you know participated in the election so that the election petition tribunal should not even take a look at the Labour Party's uh, uh, you know his own petition yeah, because they the said he was still a member of the PDP right. uh, so why did they let him take part in the in the yeah in because the they, they, they are claiming uh, you know in a controversial manner mm. that uh, Peter Obi was still a member of the uh, PDP right. when he moved into uh, you know the Labour Party Precisely on, on, on uh, May 20th uh, last year, Peter Obi had written to the PDP saying that he had left the party. But they are claiming that his name was still in the membership of the uh, PDP register and that the Labour Party's register submitted to INEC as a then did not include Peter Obi's name. But this same issue had gone to uh, the court where mm. the court discharged that and I mean the Court of Appeal said that he was right to have taken part in the election. So I don't understand the perspective yeah, it's, that INEC is it's, coming it's, from. Yeah. Uh, but also some of the claims that they've gone ahead to say that Atiku Abubakar was over reaching himself when he said that about 51,000 uh, polling units are, are across the country that there were areas of controversy uh, that some of those results which he claimed should have been declared inconclusive went ahead to have been declared that it ought not to have been so that Atiku Abubakar was you know overreaching himself mm. by going ahead to talk uh, on all of that so you see it's a bit controversial and they are, they are being dismissive of, of some of these things and of course you know that there are other critical aspects like for example Bola Tinobu's, um drug allegations mm. here and there and then of course you also have uh, the other aspects of the 25 percent in FCT or not. INEC went ahead to say that FCT is deemed to be the 37th state of the federation. Right, that's the federal capital. Territory. Yeah the federal capital territory yeah. and then on the other hand it goes on to say that it is only during elections that it's deemed to be the third seven state of the country when one of the candidates is unable to get other states. But if he has 23 
states, and then maybe FCT, then he can go, he or she can go ahead to be declared. So there are lots of controversies, and it's left for the judges to be able to give us a proper understanding of what the law yes. says, not what not what INEC thinks. And very briefly, um, Sumner, of course, INEC is in the difficult position of having to defend itself and its conduct of the ballot. And some lawyers have suggested that it, it, it would be better for justice if INEC were not a defendant. Yes, I mean, if the uh, Wales reports on the Electoral Reforms Committee mm. had been, uh, you know, fully implemented, it would have been so. But in this instance, INEC would have to come and defend itself because, I mean, that's what the petitioners are actually asking for. Because it, the onus is on INEC to let the nation know that they actually, uh, you know, conducted the election based on mm. what they had said that they would do. And this is what they are telling us right now, that they conducted the election uh, credibly and that um, they candidate that they declared who happens to be the APC's presidential candidate, Bola Metinobu, substantially fulfilled the provisions of the law by winning 29 states mm. and that he didn't need to win the FCT uh, because what the law intended was for someone to have 25, uh, 24%, 25 in 24 states and not necessarily FCT. Right. The FCT is not that's the nation's capital. It's not a super state and it doesn't have a veto power. Well, it's left for the judges to interpret it. Samna, thank you very much indeed. Thank Samna so Samba is a rise director of news and political.